Um, I'm glad you have something to drink, Tom. I don't know if you remember me. I do remember your face right away. <laughs> oh, awesome. Good, good. The, yeah, the last but I don't know where we saw each other last. So, you, I had hair back then, not as beautiful as yours, but I had hair. I was with my co-host, Greg, who apologizes he can't be here. But the three mm -hmm. of us, and I believe your manager, whose name escapes me, met in downtown Toronto on, I want to say King Street? King Street, upstairs? Upstairs, yeah. This was pre-pandemic. We took a picture. And that's right, yeah. Yeah. W one, of, one of my, arm, one of my favorite this. pictures. One of my favorite yeah. photos. Yeah, I love it too. We had a good time that day. Yeah, I did, and 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 so thank you for that, and thank you again for, for for coming on uh, a, a second time, um, and and I know we we didn't. I can't remember if we didn't have drinks for you or we got it late or something like that. But, oh hell, uh, I you know I hope I wasn't <laughs> being some kind of prissy no, pre Madonna. No, no, we were there for a while. You, I think we got. I can't remember if we got you like a coke or a water. Um, but it was, uh, it was, it was a fun chat. That's for, I, I had fun. Greg had yeah, fun. I had fun too. Okay, I remember good. it. So I must have had fun. Yeah. And I can't remember you, you had, I think as soon as we were done, you, you had to, uh, you had to jump back on the road to, for dinner with, uh, with your partner, I think. Yeah. With Margot probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and, uh, you know, traffic in Toronto is pretty shit. So yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, Let's now, get started. Know, yeah. Um, uh, you know, and I'm going to do something. I'm going to, I have to do something very on rock and roll immediately yeah. after this interview. I have to get in my car. I got to go to hot yoga. So um, I sell books, not t shirts and not drugs, and I go to hot <laughs> yoga. So that is, uh, that's where life is at. Welcome to the music, everyone. My name is Tom Wilson, De Ohahaga in Mohawk. That means two roads. I'm a modern Mohawk artist, and today that's what we're going to talk about on Welcome to the Music. All right. Tom, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's great to be back with you. I hope you're doing good. You're doing well. Thank you so much. Listen, uh, we, we talked, we've talked so far about yoga. Um, yeah. you, you don't sell hot rock yoga. Hot, oh, hot sorry. Yoga, yeah. Hot yoga. You don't sell rock and roll t-shirts. You sell books. Yeah. Um, but you're celebrating the 30th anniversary of strays. Yeah. By junk house. That's right. Um, tell, tell me, you know, re-releasing this. You guys are, are going to be playing. And by the way, congrats on that. Um, yeah. You know, two different lives. Is that, is that fair to say? Well, different... uh, not really. They're all, I, I would say that they're all one life. It's just that they're 30 different. years apart. Um, yeah. You know, I guess, and in saying that, I guess in, uh, if you say that uh, some anything is 30 years apart, it's much different than it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, there's no way 30 years ago I could have projected or thought about where I was going to be right now. Um, junk house, uh, I still have a deep passion. I still have beautiful memories of that. It's a very sentimental subject to me for a yeah. rock and roll band. Um, and uh, it wasn't uh, our idea, my idea to release this record for the 30th anniversary. It was Sony Music's, who I haven't really heard from in about 30 years. <laughs> so <laughs> um, we stopped, uh, they stopped putting out records for us uh, in the late, uh, in the late nineties. And uh, they were really good to us. I'd like, it's not one of those, uh, you know, where the record company is the devil. Uh, I don't feel that way about them. I have a lot of friends there. I had a lot of friends there. And yeah. um, and some people I'm still friends with. Some people that changed my life were at Sony Music. So um, awesome. my memories of that record company, my memories of traveling with Junk House, making music records with Junk House is all pretty, pretty a beautiful memory in my heart. Oh, that's good. So you're, 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 you're happy. You're, you're, 
celebrating this 30th anniversary and uh, doing a bunch of shows coming up later this year. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we've been out, now I got this to be very clear, Junkhouse yeah. has been on festival stages and, and yeah. rock and roll shows. We've been everywhere from the, the CNE to, uh, you know, to Canada Day festivals. Um, but we've always been on multi bills. We've been on multi band bills with you know Teenage Head and Fifty Four Forty and the Tea Party and uh, uh, God uh, Colin James. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's always been it's always been under the umbrella uh, of uh, of a larger event. This is the first time that we've in thirty in uh, since nineteen ninety seven that we've gone out and and had ticketed shows where people got to pay and come in just to see us. So we're doing uh, uh, London, Ontario uh, on uh, the 29th, I believe. We're doing 29th, K- yeah. Yeah, Kitchener, Ontario on the 30th, Hamilton, Ontario on December 1st, and uh, the Horseshoe of Toronto on uh, December the 2nd. And I think that that's a, that's a nice little package of shows, and, and the band will maybe uh, – either get to know and love one another again or we'll nice. end up in jail one or the other <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll um will colin be joining the band on on that no. trip? he's played with you guys he was my first call i mean just to let people know let your yeah. audience know we lost dan aiken that's um, right oh my god that's like uh I think it's 15 years ago. We lost Dan Aiken uh, about 15 years ago, the guitar player for Junk House, who was the healthiest member of Junk House. He was always in shape. And while we were on tour buses doing all kinds of uh, uh, mischievous things, uh, you know, he was going to bed early, waking up and having his yogurt and his banana in the morning and, and going and shopping for uh, pawn shops and for guitars. You know, he had a healthy life going on, but he dropped dead playing hockey. Um, wow. so since then we've had to have, uh, we've had, we've had really wonderful people fill in on guitar, uh, including Colin Cripps for a couple shows years ago. Also Aaron Goldstein. Um, are, is on these shows, but uh, for for this version of Junk House, Colin is going to be in Europe with Blue Rodeo, and we're going to have uh, Champagne James Robertson uh, joining us in Junk House. Nice, that'll that'll be fun. It'll be great. If people are are following you on on Instagram, um, just a fantastic feed, by the way. And, and one, oh, of re- one of the one of the there's a couple of reasons why I love it. Number one. Uh, you share your art, uh, yeah. your paintings, which are stunning. Yeah. Um, and number two, um, you're, you're posting photos of and video sometimes of your your friends, your musical collaborators. Yeah. Well, um, that's right. I mean, uh, this room that we're in right now, this living room. Yeah. Uh, the living room of my house. You know, it, it hosts um, writers coming in to work with me. I don't, I don't bother going to a studio, and I don't bother putting people in a studio. It's basically a, a living area, a family area. Uh, the TV's in here. There's a wall of vinyl records in here. There's always a couple guitars hanging around. My dog, Lucy. And um, it feels like a home. And uh, if somebody wants to get up and make a cup of coffee, the kitchen's right there. If they, there's always snacks out. There's always some, you know, cheese and meat and crackers or a, a pot of soup on the stove. So uh, creating an environment for people to feel comfortable and yeah. human to create in, is, it's really important. Uh, it's something I learned uh, years ago from Daniel Landmore in New Orleans uh, at his place. And, uh, you know, there's no, there's less mystical, magical, um, powers and more just, uh, home life, uh, familiarity that really breeds, uh, great ideas. And that's what this is. So in the last, geez, I guess in the last month alone, we've had uh, Tara Lightfoot and Daniel Lanois and yeah. the Trues 
and Colin James. And uh, coming along for that ride the whole time is my son Thompson, who is uh, is a writer and uh, uh, okay. musician himself. Yeah. All right. And just, yeah. Uh, Jesse O'Brien, Jesse O'Brien on keyboards, who uh, who works with me uh, all the time too. Can we can we expect some friends at uh, at some of these shows? I don't know. I don't have many friends. Uh, so well, you just you just named a handful right there, Tom. Huh? Yeah. Well, I don't know uh, that I don't know about. I think yeah. that um, I think that uh, my focus right now is on the body of work of Junk House and yeah. uh, making that the very best it can possibly be on mm-hmm. a stage for for people to see. I mean, you know, we're talking about. Uh, uh, a band that people really maybe have not seen in in thirty years. Yeah, you know. So uh, I wouldn't mind trying to be good. That would that would be. My- <laughs> Listen, I, I heard you uh, and uh, Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. You guys had also had Tara Lightfoot there. Daniel Lanois joined you. Um, Massey Hall was it earlier this year or last year? No, it was October. It was about a year ago. Actually, a year was, uh, ago, October the. 28th i believe oh about just the, yeah a fantastic show yeah that was that was a good time you know yeah once again you know the um creating an environment that's like home it's like a get together yeah uh, uh, that uh, you know it's it's very clear that the people that i work with on stage i'm i'm friends with i'm you know they're they're my brothers and my sisters so um taking that feeling uh, out to the stage and sharing it with uh, you know a larger environment like Massey Hall, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that people in the audience feel that uh, that warmth and that connection. Yeah. What do you th- What do you think of the uh, the renovations, the new Massey Hall? Well, I play. Uh, I guess we played there after the renovations. It's great. Yeah. I'll tell you that uh, the theater, and I've been to shows at the theater. I'm going to Bob Dylan uh, see Bob Dylan and Nick Cave uh, this month. So, wow. um, you know, they're, they're, uh, I'm going to experience the hall uh, by sitting in it, you know. I mean, yeah. uh, the seats had just had to be more comfortable. You know what I mean? They had to do something about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Um, they, put that uh, they put that ring, uh, that ring around the orchestra of uh, like that's three right. or four seat level seats. I think that's a good idea. The stage is exactly the same as I remember it. Okay. But for years, the backstage changed, and that was uh, heartbreaking to me. Okay. Because um, the backstage, I, I, you got to remember that Massey Hall, um, every hall you go to, your bus, your tour bus shows up, the production truck shows up, and uh, they pull into a loading bay, and they load unseen, and it's convenient. Usually the trucks and the buses back right up to the uh, very back of the stage and the, the doors open up and you load onto the stage. That's how it works. Massey Hall, for uh, since its inception, uh, there was no equipment truck showing up. There was just people with violins and, and reed instruments, uh, you know, showing up through the stage door. So when you uh, when you did a show, any show at, that you saw at Massey Hall, those front doors opened and a ramp was built and all the equipment went down the center aisle of oh. the uh, of the orchestra and were, was loaded onto the stage. That's that's not very convenient and it's not very helpful to to uh, the hall or the touring bands, really. So what they did was they uh, took off the back of the building and they rebuilt uh, new loading docks and elevators and uh, dressing rooms. But in doing that, they lost what I felt was as important an essence and entity of Massey Hall as the hall itself, which was the dressing rooms. Those Mm. dressing rooms, they always looked dirty. Those dressing rooms, you know, look like they could have been painted once a week. They were old and they yeah. were tobacco stained. And uh, they, if the walls could speak, they would tell the stories of uh, Charlie Parker and Miles Davis and Leonard Cohen and Bob Dylan and Pete Seeger and on and on and on. All the, all the classical uh, uh, musicians. Um, so there was a soul. That was ripped off. Yeah. The- oh. I'm not complaining because 
when I get to play there, I have a very luxurious <laughs> dressing room. But at the same time, and, and that happened years ago. Um, okay. That happened uh, probably, I'd say, uh, six, seven, eight years ago that I, yeah. I got to show at Massey Hall. And I was very excited to go to those dressing rooms. I mean, I met Bruce Springsteen in those dressing rooms. You know what wow. I mean? Who read in those dressing rooms? You know, I hung out with Murray McLaughlin and Gordon Lightfoot in the on in those dressing rooms. They they meant something to me. Anyways, that was a long that was a long answer to a very simple question on how do you like the new Massey Hall? How do I like it? I love the new Massey Hall. Yeah, L listen, Tom, you you could answer however you want. One of the uh, one of the things I, I most remember about our first time together were your stories. Um, oh, yeah. and, and I, I think, you know, that's one of the reasons I think that people are attracted to you is because, um, you just, you, you bring them in with, you've, you've got a voice that draws people in, uh, and you've got stories, whether they're stories about your life on the road, um, or whether, uh, you're telling stories, uh, about your, your life, uh, especially from, you know, beautiful scars. Um, and you can tell stories. I have no problem with, okay, uh, with, good. with, with them. We'll with just them. keep doing this then. We seem, we seem to get along wonderfully. I think so. I think so, Tom. Um, I, I, you were recently, uh, awarded, given, granted the order of Canada earlier, yes, was right. it earlier this year, right? Yeah. Uh, that was in June. Uh, well, they let me know in May. And, okay. and they, they announced it in June that I am a, uh, I don't know what I am. I'm a companion uh, to the Order of Canada. I am an executive of the Order of Canada. Okay. I don't know the exact terminology. What's that, honey? Oh, I'm a member of the Order You're of Canada. You're a member. Can now, and this, whenever is why, this is why we need wives or partners, because <laughs> uh, they know things that I have no idea about. Absolutely. That's for sure. Um I wanted to ask you this question, and um, you're, you're, I don't know if you know Stevie Salas? I know Stevie Salas. Yeah, we, we had him on a while ago, and we were talking about his documentary, Rumble. Yeah, that's beautiful, right. Beautiful documentary. Um, and I can't remember what the question was, but we were talking about he wanted to celebrate um, and if you don't mind me saying, you know, the, the subtitle of the, of the documentary is Indians Who Rock the World. He wanted, right. to, he wanted to celebrate uh, Indians. He wanted to celebrate Indian culture. He wanted to showcase here are, the, here are his brothers and sisters who've made an impact in rock and roll. That's and he right. wanted to showcase that. And, you know, because we were talking about, you know, um, how do you tell the story of of indigenous culture of indian culture and celebrate that rather than how do you tell the story of being uh, a people that have been subjugated by by the state and he said he just wanted to tell a beautiful story well he told um, a good story he told um i think he did a, he did a great service to uh, the indigenous culture yeah um, as uh, the great late Norval Morriso uh, mm. stated, um, if we don't tell our stories, yeah. nobody else will. And that's the way it is for um, uh, for marginal uh, people. Yeah. Um, you know, if if uh, if if we don't tell our stories, we can't expect uh, uh, the uh, I hate to say white, but we can't expect the colonial sure, world. There you go. Yeah, we can't expect the colonial world to step up and celebrate us, yeah. celebrate our contributions to the world, celebrate our culture, celebrate our languages. That's mm. not what colonialism is about. Colonialism is about ripping apart and destroying everything about people and mm. taking it over. Yeah. And uh, so... Stevie Salas did a great service to the story of how indigenous music has influenced uh, rock and roll, has influenced jazz, yeah. and has heavily influenced blues, which basically is rock and roll music. Um, yeah. 
So without uh, without the indigenous culture, and it's not a fringe thing. It no. was, uh, when you listen to the uh, the deepest roots of blues music, when you listen to uh, the deepest roots of rock and roll, uh, it, it, it's it's based on indigenous singing and and uh, drumming and uh, celebration. Yeah. So that alone that spirit alone has has uh has has conquered uh the uh the cultures has conquered the world with its with its culture i meant to say yeah uh, but it was unknown once again so thank you stevie salas thank yeah. you for uh, doing that job i appreciate it and and your your art sort of reminds me of the same thing where you're you're just creating these beautiful pieces whether they're on uh, on a traditional canvas or whether you're painting ores um yeah. it, you know you're 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 showing the to me you're showing the beauty of uh, of of your culture of mohawk um culture and and it's it's a beautiful thing well it, it, that's my job now um mm. my my full-time job is is uh presenting uh myself the Mohawk culture um, through uh, my visual art, through the books I, I write, through the music I create, through the play that I just finished um, writing and that we go into rehearsals for oh. next week. Um, all these things, all these things are not based on ego. They're, they're not based on, oh, that's my mother calling. Hold on. That's all right. Yeah, that's okay. Um, uh, they're based off the need to uh, put the Mohawk culture into the light and to celebrate it. The same way Stevie Salas celebrated other artists, I'm celebrating yeah. my own culture and my own art. I can't speak for any other nations. I can't yeah. speak for anyone else. I can't speak for you. I yeah. can speak for myself. So that's what I'm doing now. And maybe, uh, you know what, maybe that's what, um, maybe that's... Uh, the difference between mm. who I was in junk house and who I am now. The difference is the guy in junk house didn't know that he was indigenous. I only found out I was Mohawk uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. So the guy who was in junk house was creating music uh, just based on raw passion mm. and the need to create and uh, the person now, 30 years later, is is now still got that same passion and that need to create, but now it's got a target, and that target is to bring the Mohawk culture into the light. Can you talk a bit about this play that you've written? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, the play is based off the book. Um, Beautiful Scars? Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, uh, the, it was also a movie, right? It was also that's a documentary. Right. That's yeah. Right. So the book became the book became a bestseller. Uh, the book became a documentary. And uh, now the book is becoming a play. The play is opening in Hamilton, a theater Aquarius, which is one of the uh, a houses in the country. And also it's the home for all new musicals uh, on all new uh, theater that's coming out of Canada. So that's pretty good. That's nice. That's a nice feather in the cap of theater Aquarius. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, the the play developed out of the book. It was written with uh, my friend Sean Smythe, and now I've uh, brought my voice to that script, and we go to work next week. And uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting journey because I'm not that familiar with the theater. But like I say, if we are led by passion, if we're led by desire, it's amazing uh, the walls that we can knock down and the things that we can uh, we can contribute to. Wow. Are you also going to be in this play? Fuck no. <laughs> Why would you say it like that? <laughs> uh, because I'm, uh, I, 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 I'm 64. I have a terrible memory and uh, I, I'm a terrible actor. <laughs> So uh, why would I why would I walk on that stage and destroy everything that we've worked for? I mean, uh, I'm very good at uh, I'm not a good actor. I'm good at acting up, you know, <laughs> so um, so I'm going to let like uh, I'm going to let the real actors do the work there, man. I, uh, I have no place there. Yeah, um, we had 
you're not going to be able to see this, but I need to pull this down. Uh, we had Patrick Hunter. Uh, oh, yeah. look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, he, he, he came into our office and um, he, you know, he's telling stories. Uh, I don't know if you know Patrick Hunter. He's, uh, um, I, don't, I don't know what nation he's with. I apologize. Um, but he just he was just sharing stories about his life, about his culture. And then he was telling stories about the, uh, the feather and uh, helped us design and, and paint them at, at work. Um, uh, give me his name again because I want to look him up. Yeah, I, I, uh, Patrick. I will not, I will not, I will not, uh, I will not pass this by i will look this up immediately what is his name patrick hunter patrick hunter okay i'm looking it up right now yeah uh, okay excellent now now i've got him yeah i want to say he's from red lake ontario oh yeah way up there right eh? he's a yeah. Jibber. yeah 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 and he's and he's painting feathers yeah but one of the things he does is is, is feathers yeah. Um, but, but it was, it was just, it was just so beautiful. And Tom, I had a question, uh, that, that I wanted to, uh, wanted to ask you on that. And it has slipped my brain. Um, okay. you're a young <laughs> when do you get to be my age. I'll, re I'll remember, I'll remember a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Here's one of my paintings. Oh, beautiful. Uh, yeah. And uh, this is this is a series of paintings I'm doing called Seeds, uh, named after the series is named after uh, the Julian Taylor song. Oh. Uh, Seeds. Julian Taylor has this song. Uh, they thought they could bury us, but they didn't know we were seeds. And uh, oh. I've done several residential school paintings like this, and this is representing the uh, wow. colonial world trying to bury. The indigenous people, but uh, of course, we rise above yeah. all that colonial silliness. Yeah, um, this is this is what I wanted to ask you. So Patrick came into our into our office, um, and he came last week, the week before. But it was, you know, we were it was at that time where we're celebrating. Um, Truth and Reconciliation, Reconciliation Day. Day, Orange Orange Shirt Day. Um, and I know we're always asking you about what we need to learn. Yeah. And I that must be tough. And I'm I'm just to keep reminding people. Yeah, like, and well, especially like at one one time one time of the year it seems. Right, like we'll forget mm -hmm. about Patrick Hunter for the rest of the year, and we'll remember him um, one time a year or a couple of times a year. Um, in your journey of now taking it upon yourself to create art, um, whether it be through the beautiful painting you just showed, your play that you're putting together, um, your story. Your, I guess for you, this is sort of the journey that you're on doesn't matter what day of the year it is. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I'm now, I'm Mohawk 24 hours a day. It's not like that yeah. changed. Um, my inspiration is, is coming at me 24 hours a day. Uh, guess what's coming into play there? I have, I have things to sing about. I have, uh, yeah. uh, I have messages to get out. And, uh, and that's, that, like I say, that's my job. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. As far as educating uh, people about, uh, truth and reconciliation and uh uh that that's just a job that's a job mm -hmm. that i'll be doing for the rest of my life and i yeah. don't expect anything to be fixed in my lifetime hopefully by the time my grandkids are are adults um uh, that won't you know that that won't be an issue the thing is that um uh the white world mm -hmm. is in is an unbelievable fear that mm -hmm. uh that people of color are trying to take over their, their world. Well, they're behind. The world is, is already, you know, it's already outnumbered. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the way to deal with truth and reconciliation is to listen, uh, is to stop trying to be an authority. The problem is 
is that, uh, you know, sadly, um, the, the colonial way is to be an authority over people, mm. is to kind of listen and, yeah, I understand. You know, that's, that's, that's a quick answer to a very, very complicated question. I think that, uh, and, and I, I, you know, I, I say this every night on stage, but if we open up our hearts to one another, uh, we just might stand a chance, you know, to be a better planet, to be a better society. But until we do that, until we learn to do that, until we get rid of Twitter and uh, <laughs> and Fox and CNN News and all the noise that is going on, and, and trust me, I'm I'm as guilty as anyone, you know, as, as going to those sources to yeah. to encourage some kind of devil in me, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, that's how people are used to reacting with one another so when you drive your car you know in in toronto you know it is uh, uh you know it, it, it's you're being treated as as just an obstacle in people's lives we're not obstacles in one another's lives we're all we're all sharing the same energy together yeah. so uh it's kind of important to start making those changes the indigenous story is a part of that the colonial story is not a part of anything in this world anymore it is mm. it's soon to be forgotten so um let's just accept that and let's start living and loving together tom it's always a pleasure to chat with you thank you so much for your time you 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 picked up a guitar do you feel like playing something or I don't. Um, okay. <laughs> I, just, yeah, I was working with uh, Josh Finlayson earlier and the guitar was here on the couch. And I saw my wife come into the room and start picking stuff up and putting it away. So I thought <laughs> I would take the guitar and make it appear that I was helping her out. <laughs> Tom, this has been fantastic. Um, November 29th in London, 30th in Waterloo, Kitchener, December the 1st in Hamilton and December the 2nd at the Horseshoe in Toronto. Come see him play with his friends, Junk House. And uh, if you haven't seen the TVO documentary, check it out, Beautiful Scars. Um, go to your local bookstore, pick up his book, and uh, keep an eye out for the play coming soon. Yeah, thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure uh, seeing your face and, and talking to you. So uh, until next time, my friend. Thank you. Okay. Peace. Bye. See you.